Hi, I'm Brad Jolly, and I'm an application engineer here at Keysight Technology. Today we're going to talk about how you set the minimum transmit power threshold for your device when you're testing it with an x8711A functional IoT device tester. So typically the way you start is this. You've got the, your curve for your known good devices and you have your specification and so you'd set, simply set your minimum th uh, threshold right there. You also probably want to move it in just a little bit to account for any uncertainty in the measurement device. Ideally then what you end up with is you've got your good devices here, your bad devices have distribution that looks like this and you're all set. But what happens a lot of the time is you have some bad devices that still have decent transmit power and it looks like this. Now these may be devices that are functionally okay but they have mar may have marginal defects in them. For example, they may have a billboarded resistor or something may be misaligned or you may have a uh, head on pillow sort of de uh, defect where you've got the solder down here and the device is laying on top of it but you really don't have a, a good connection. And so what you end up having to do is move this to the right but when you do that you end up adding more cost and risk to yourself or you can move this to the left but if you do that now you're shipping bad devices to your customer and you don't want to do that. So you've got a conundrum here. So what do you do? Well what you do is you try to separate the two distributions as follows. What you can do here is take this distribution and try to move it to the right so it looks more like that. How do you do that? Well that's some, a, a conversation you have to have with your suppliers and your process engineers so that you end up with a more tightly uh, distributed product uh, for, for your good products. Then what you try to do is move this to the left. Well, how do you do that? Well, it turns out that that is not actually one homogeneous group of defects. What you have is you have several defects okay, of different types and these different colors represent different kinds of defects that make this up. And what you do is you try to figure out what defects are causing the device to look like it's sort of a good device but they're actually defective. And so in this case what we would do is look at our Pareto of defects and go after the blue defects, whatever that is. So let's say that's a, uh, a misaligned resistor or maybe that's a uh, out of spec part of some sort. Then what we do is we implement some sort of upstream test there, perhaps uh, pre-reflow or post-reflow automated optical inspection or AOI, or maybe it's a, a real change issue that's causing the problems, in which case it's simply a matter of having uh, two different process people check a real change before implementing it in production. But either way, what you do is you get rid of these blue defects, and the net effect of that is you end up with a distribution that has more separation and you end up with something that looks like this at the end. So you've got that there and then you've got this here and at that point you can set your threshold in the middle and then move it either left or right uh, to uh, get, put more risk on yourself or on the customer uh, depending on the nature of the application. So there have been many books written on this topic and this is just kind of a quick overview. At the end of the video, you will see some links where you can go for further information. Thank you for watching.